The Think Tank Bipartisan Policy Center is celebrating the one-year anniversary of the Bob and Elizabeth Dole series on leadership. In addition to promoting effective and strong leadership, the series honors the public service of former Senator Bob Dole and former Senator and Labor and Transportation Secretary Elizabeth Dole. By the way, Senator Bob Dole actually turns 96 this month. Joining us to talk about the leadership series, as well as celebrations marking Senator Dole's big birthday, is Jason Grumet. He's the founder and president of the Bipartisan Policy Center. Welcome, Jason. Happy to be here. So tell us a little bit about Bob Dole's legacy, I guess, in, in your view for the Bipartisan Policy Center and American politics at large. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. Bob Dole uh, is one of the co-founders of our organization, along mm -hmm. with Tom Daschle and George Mitchell and Howard Baker. Yeah. And you know, I think he's really one of the people who symbolizes what it means to be a productive partisan, right? There's no mm -hmm. question about what Bob Dole believes, but he was one of those really unique leaders who had the kind of courage of empathy and the capacity to figure out how to bring people together. You know, I think the, the story of this country is not 200 years of placid cohesion, right? Democracy is a good fight. And Bob and Elizabeth Dole are two of the people who understood how to do that in a way that actually advanced the national interest. So what are the, the lessons that you would take from that approach? I like that terminology. What did you say? Productive partisan. What are the hallmarks of an effective productive partisan? So we started a, a leadership series a year ago in honor of uh, Bob's 95th birthday called the Bob and Elizabeth Dole series on leadership with the goal of trying to kind of understand that a little bit, right? You know, leadership is a kind of concept that is in very high demand and low supply in right. Washington. So our ambition was to look beyond DC and find people from academia and local government and the advocacy and the business community to see, you know, could we in fact distill some of those traits? And so I'll give you just a, a couple of insights. Um, one I mentioned a moment ago, which is the courage of empathy. What we have found in talking to leaders, and these are, you know, Oscar Munoz, the CEO of United Airlines, and Lonnie Bunch, who's now the secretary of the Smithsonian and founded the African American Museum of Arts and Culture, Vicki Holub, the first female CEO of a major oil company, Occidental, you know, they all describe situations where they found themselves in really intense disagreement with somebody and found the moment to step back and try to imagine that person's point of view, right? Yeah. There's this notion that, like, I've met a lot of people who are wrong, but no one who's, like, 100% wrong. Yeah, right? there's like, always something there. There's always, like, that 10 or 15%. And, and the act of kind of letting go of your own ambition and imagining the other person's perspective requires incredible courage. That reminds me of, there's a saying in marriage, you can either be right or you can be happy. Mm. <laughs> it's kind of, I think, related concept there. But yeah. I think the, I'll you know, tell the, you yeah, about that later, yeah, soccer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I look forward to not finding out for a while. But uh, so Jason, I think, I think what we're really getting at here is everybody in Washington always talks about, we want common ground, we have to find common ground. It's, most of it's BS and they don't actually care. So what is it about these leaders, and I guess Bob Dole, the legacy in particular, that actually made him somebody who wants to do that? Mm -hmm. So again, you know, the notion these days uh, is that rigidity equals courage, mm -hmm. right? It's the people who are willing to kind of go to the ramparts and, you know, fight for yes. their views. And this premise that somehow collaboration is a sign of weakness, I think, is really fundamentally what is kind of corrosive to making a divided country move forwards. And Bob Dole and John McCain, I mean, people whose courage is unquestioned have some greater capacity to be willing, again, to extend a compromise. Now, you know, my experience, most of the 535 members of Congress are actually really decent, patriotic people with really crappy incentives. And so one of the things we think about in this leadership series is not this, you know, leadership, leaders are born, but you know, what are, not just the characteristics, what are the circumstances that enable leaders? A lot yeah. of what we are trying to think through is what could be done without, you know, a Mars landing or a constitutional convention to give Congress more capacity and one of the keys, and this is something that you know, Senator Dole talks about a lot, is friendship. Huh. You know, it was the ability to know someone well enough to have a really intense disagreement on a Tuesday and work together on a Wednesday. R respectfully, I find that hard to buy. I mean, frankly, I don't think that the problem in Washington is that people aren't having lunch together enough, right? There seem to be more systemic issues that you point to. I mean, you have polarization, you have mm -hmm. increased um, underlying social cultural factors yeah. that are driving yeah. that, so right, that are reflected in the yeah. politics yeah. here. So like, well, so you know, I mean, not to not to get into specifics on the political front, but you have Joe Biden running a campaign right now basically on the model of let's go back to that model, right? Let's go back to I'm going to sit down at the table and work with Mitch McConnell. Yeah. 
Mitch McConnell doesn't want to work with him. He's not going to work with him. It's it's a so fantasy. Look, so both look, both things are true, right? And I don't want to suggest for a moment that we go back yeah. to this kind of halcyon day where they all went to Which Cubs. Which is always yeah. like okay. much yeah. less real than it actually is portrayed, right? Yeah. Yes, and trusting somebody is not sufficient, but it is necessary. Hmm. And what we have found, you know, we're doing something called the American Congressional Exchange, where we're getting members to actually spend weekends in each other's districts. And they get to know each other, and it's not just having lunch together, right? You know, Jack Bergman from the upper, you know, Mitten of yep. Michigan, Stephanie Murphy from Orlando, realized essentially that they had left Vietnam at essentially the same time. Bergman, after two tours of duty, Congresswoman Murphy as a six-month-old in a boat being picked up by a naval destroyer. Mm -hmm. Something happened after that that has now enabled them to work together. They've put legislation together that passed on the National Defense Authorization Act. And so, you know, my point is not that this is the solution, but we have actually made it harder for members of Congress in any meaningful way to know each other. I, don't I trips applaud together. that, yeah. But I think it, it, it goes to Crystal's point to the vice versa. If somebody thinks you're a racist, how are you supposed to sit down with them? I mean, if you start if off they from, say it sends you somebody, back to your country if somebody, that you... If you start off from a point of you are a racist right. because you support X policy, I mean, what is there to so talk look, about? So look, I'm with you, but yeah, like, would you feel that way as easily yeah. if you actually knew that person? Probably right? not. Probably but, not. But you're right. But the incentive really is not to get to know that right. person. So, yeah. you know, look, there's a larger question about, you know, election right. reform and the amount of time folks spend mm -hmm. fundraising, but there are also some smaller moves, right? Congressional committees used to be the engine of the democracy, right? They were the places where people spent time, had some real political differences, but some subject matter expertise, some commitment to outcome. Those committees have now been basically denuded of power because leadership's absconded with everything. Mm -hmm. Those are kinds of modest changes that at least would strengthen the capacity. But I think, you know, coming back to our friend Bob Dole, yeah. and I want to note yeah. that we do have a, a strategic partnership with uh, Shake Shack because... Uh, which I am insanely jealous of. Second, <laughs> no, second only to love of country, um, uh, Bob love of Dole's Shake Shack. greatest love <laughs> is chocolate milkshakes. Wow. And so every year we deliver a large number of frozen concoctions to the Watergate and his hotel, Austin and Bird. We get some at the BPC. That's awesome. And it's just a moment to kind of step back and realize mm -hmm. something else, which is a core aspect of leadership, which is humor. Yeah. Something That's that Dory yeah. tells us, take himself less seriously than his ambition. Well, if you know any people there at Shake Shack, tell them they need yeah, to bring back the boat. peanut butter yeah. milkshake because that thing was delicious yeah. and I miss it deeply. We also have a nutrition project, so I might oh, be a little yeah. bit hedged yeah, in, that, right. um, in right. that challenge. Well, thank you so much, Jason. It's great thank to you. Great to have you. Take we appreciate care. it. We'll have more rising for you after this.